Okay, I think I'm ready. Sorry, this floor is a mess. Okay. All right. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Um, so, I'm working on these, um, and these Rococo end tables, and I'm... Putting, I'm adding detail over um, or over the details I already have. Uh, what I did was I painted this in a base of um, Eclipse milk paint from Rust-Oleum. So this is with a base of the Eclipse milk paint, um, and then I brushed the tourmaline, tourmaline, tourmaline. <laughs> color uh, over the black and then I brush the black over again so it's kind of like a, a brushing of black on top of it with the base of black um, and the top is called black cherry I used the black cherry um, Lysol enamel paint for the top because um, I wanted a few different colors with this move this over. I want you to be able to see it, but this one is the one that um, I experimented with first. So this is kind of the look that I'm going for um, with the powdered um, Merlot, I think it's called, uh, artisan powder. I added a little bit of the pink one and I may add something else. Um, I'm just seeing as it goes what colors I want to add on on top of what I already have. Um, I'm going for kind of like a uh, Baroque Gothic sort of look with these ones, um, just because that's just how I feel right now. So um, that is what I'm basically going for as far as the style goes with this one. Um, with these, there's actually a coffee table too on the other side. Uh, so it's kind of like an end table set and then glass goes on top of here. So I could add a transfer if I wanted to on the top. Um, I'll see how it goes. I may add, you know, a little bit of a transfer uh, because the glass will protect it. So I'm not too worried about it getting scraped off and stuff. So that is my plan for today. Um, let's see. Hoping you can hear me. And let's get powdering. Um, you've probably already seen these powders before because I use them a lot, but just to recap, um, I'm using the Madame Merlot. So this one is a, a nice um, sort of like a burgundy red-ish um, that's slightly brighter. And then I have, this one is the Charlotte Blush Artisan uh, Powder Glare. Um, and this one's more of a, like, a light powdery pink color. Um, I have a bunch of other colors, too, that I can use, except I placed it behind over there. Um, sorry. Um, 
Okay, there we go. I want to make sure I have those within my reach in case I want to use something else. There's a bunch of different colors. Um, there's like an amber color. There's a uh, light blue color. Hmm. There's kind of like a coral peachy color. Uh, let's see. More of a, it's called French blue, so a bit of a um, brighter blue uh, taupe. Like a beige taupe sort of color. Uh, there is like an olive sort of color. So a bunch of a bunch of different colors. This one's more of a patina. Um, and I use them because I like the sort of um, chalky powder look instead of a glaze. With the glaze, it would just rest within the crevices. So with the powders, I can actually put them on top of the raised areas um, versus just using a glaze for that purpose. Um, and they're just more pigmented too. So it just shows up better than using glazes. Um, and all of my waxes are metallic. So these ones are matte in color, which is also why I use them um, versus just using wax. Even though there are matte waxes now um, from Finnebear, she has a line of uh, matte waxes too. So not all of them are shiny, but it's still, you know, metallic um, in the, like, it's still a metallic sort of color. So even though it's not shiny, it still resembles metallics. So that's why I go for the, um, the pigments for this. You can use um, mica powders as well. So I do have mica powders. Um, you can use mica powders too, but most mica powders are metallic too. So that's another reason why I use the artisan powders. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and powder this. Um, I have, let's see, let me grab a baby wipe. I honestly should put on gloves, but oh well. Um, so I have these stenciling brushes that I use a lot. Uh, these are the art basic ones. They come in different sizes. Um, and they're smaller than the, the redesign line ones. So I use these a lot for detailing and stuff like that. Um, for the waxes, I have different sizes, like the smaller ones that I like to use for detailing with waxes and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so these are nifty to have. And they work better than, you know, trying to use like a, a paintbrush, for example, to dab on. It would work. You don't have to have a fancy brush, but um, it's just easier having a smaller uh, brush to kind of powder it on and also the bristles are rough um, So that makes a difference too. If, if you have a synthetic bristles, it tends to go on more smoother um, I want like a rough sort of texture. So for texturing I like to use these um, okay, Where is okay, so when I um, apply the glazes, oh, I missed a spot right here Sorry. I'll show you how I try how I brushed it on so this bit, can you see that? This bit right here. So I basically just brushed on the black like that to give it, you know. So I wanted a little bit of it to pop with the blue, but I didn't want to do the blue. Um, I wasn't really feeling blue, so I wanted more of a darker um, sort of feel for this one, which is why I decided to just dry brush um, the black on top of it. Um, just to make it look a bit more cohesive than um, what I already have for, for that. All right. So I'm going to try to make sure I wash these so they're a little bit damp, but that's okay. I'll be dipping them in poly anyways. Uh, I have the Master Clear Poly. You can use any sort of poly. You don't have to use this one. Um, any sort of poly or liquid works with the powders. Uh, you need something for the powders to cling on. If you do it while the paint's wet, it's just sort of going to blend into the paint. So if you use a little bit of clear, um, some sort of clear product on top, it helps it stick on so it doesn't just come off um, when you touch it. So I only add a little bit of it on. I don't need a lot and just kind of powder it on like this um, and you can see it complements the black cherry on top 
uh, as well. So just to kind of balance it out. And then I just dip it a little bit, um, just a you know, tiny, tiny bit. Don't use a lot and just get it on the surface. I'm only going over these areas. Um, I might do a sort of uh, powdering in a different color upwards here, but um, I haven't decided yet what I want to do. So I'm just going to do this for now with the powdering. I'm going to get the details right here, too. Uh, the powder, the name of the powder is Memory Hardware Artisan Powder. Um, it's from Frank Garcia, uh, the designer, and it is part of the Prima line. I think it's redesign is going to carry it if they don't already carry it. So it's kind of like a specialty uh, powder Um that's just pigmented. You can use it for a lot, a lot of things. Um, besides just powdering like I'm doing, you can use it to make glazes. If you mix it in with a liquid, it colors it like a mica powder. So you can create glazes, you can create your own uh, paint color um, if you wanted to. Mix it with a paint color and it'll um, kind of blend in with it if you wanted. So just like a very versatile uh, product for a lot of different looks. Um, you don't have to use it the way I am. So, uh, but I just wanted it to go, ah, need wood glue there. This thing is, <laughs> is an antique for sure. And um, the people who had it, when I got it, <laughs> that it was like young college kids and it reeked of, uh, of uh, you know, marijuana. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, it was just, it was kind of crazy, but yeah, this thing's been through a lot, so, um, so I, I had to get rid of the, of the smell, um, ended up airing it outside, um, I used the Tough Task Crud Cutter and just sprayed it, and then I hosed it down and it got rid of the smell, thankfully, but, um, it's definitely really reaped. So yeah, just a fun fact about my uh, journey with these. So super easy to do. This is, um, I like doing this stuff because it's just, I don't know, it's like relaxing and you're just kind of doing it. It's not precise, you know, you just kind of dab it on wherever you want. Get this, keeping this under it because the powder um, drifts down and it stains, like it will stain your carpet if you don't have something under it um, just because it's so, so pigmented that it stains everything. gonna do this color first and then I'll add the other uh, to it on top of it. And I just like how the blue is kind of peeking through, but it's not really, um, it's not very, like, it's subtle, it's not too bold, so just doing this, and I'll have to have this uh, dry before I start using some waxes, otherwise it's just going to make a mess, um, so I, that's why I'm doing this one first too, just to, so it has a, a chance to dry before I start using any waxes on top. Like this. So. Oh. 
push this forward so you can see it. I'm trying to see if this is And it does kind of pop against the black too, which is, which is nice. And with these ornate pieces, you really don't have to do too much to them for them to even look fantastic. Um, but when you do, I think it brings it a bit, you know, it gives it that like extra, um, extra pizzazz. So I like to highlight the, the details because that's what makes it special. Um, this is all carved too. It's carved wood. It's not resin or anything. Um, so very ornate uh, living rooms, coffee table set. And it took forever to paint through the crevices. Um, if you paint something like this, um, you it's easier to spray <laughs> to get all the details. If you want to do it nice and quick, uh, painting it by brush takes longer to do. Um, so a spray would be a lot easier. The spray will get through everything, you know, so Using a spray would only take you a few minutes, um, whereas hand painting, it takes a couple of hours, a few hours sometimes, so. Make sure you can see your comments this time, I think, so. this all over there. I don't know if you can see that the red coming through. Just adding it to some of these areas. All right, so we've got all the sides now. Um, let's see. There was something, oh yes, I wanted to show you something that I really love right now. Um, so I don't know if you know, uh, Prima Marketing is part of Redesign. Um, it's like the mothership and Redesign is a branch, um, the sister branch. <clears throat> so they have a lot of cool Prima, uh, like, they have more of the um, artsy sort of products, and um, this one recently came out. It's called a jewel paste, so it's very blingy. So I really love this one, and I might, I'm probably going to use this too on it. But here, let me try to bring it up. So this is the jewel paste. It is really shiny and sparkly and pretty. It's really hard to see um, on camera, so, but it's super sparkly um, and it's really creamy. Um, you can see on my fingers. So I think I'm going to highlight some areas with this um, wonderful jewel paste too. So I'll add a little bit of that on as well to, uh, to do more detailing. So, oh, hey, Chris, do you, do you have, yes, go paint something. Uh, painting is the only thing keeping me sane right now um, with everything going on. So it's always, always uh, therapeutic to paint. I'm going to cover this paint so I don't spill it. As I do more of the powdering. I think I should add a bit more of the pinks on, or should I do a little bit of waxing? Let's see. So here's my wax bin. <laughs> I can you see I have a problem? <laughs> so, um, I will use. No, I think a 
bit of rusty brown. I mean, I know it sounds bad, but I think a bit of rusty brown doesn't sound very appealing, but it's pretty cool. Shabby pink. This one's one of the matte uh, waxes too. So let's see how shabby pink goes. Try not to do super bright colors with this one. Um, the red amber and then I have uh, burgundy too so here's burgundy I'll pull burgundy as well and see how that goes um, let's see for the powders um, vintage ivory and see if I end up using it um, in the taupe. I'm not sure yet. I'm not even sure if I want to add gold to over it. Um, that Maybe that's too much. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the, uh, the paste, this really cool paste, how it looks. So I'm going to dry. Is that one just the wax one? Okay, that's the wax brush. Okay, I'm going to use this jewel paste ink and see how it looks. So it's adding some pink sparkle to it. Just going to swipe it on a little bit here and there. Because um, with black, it really shows off colors. Which is kind of why I use black a lot because um, it makes the the waxes and colors really stand out uh, with the wax the black as a base um, for it. So I think it looks cool. All right. Yes, I think I'll have this as the metallic instead of any gold or silver. Um, I think I'm not going to do any gold or silver this time. Just use this. Uh, paste think just adding a little bit on the bottoms and the corners and stuff um, to the tint this area was I just painted that and now it's all dry so let me powder that area too a little bit um, with the the Merlot powder so this is the Merlot. For those of you just joining, it's the Merlot. Um, using that first. I think this one's going to be more of a mm, black cherry, pink, black sort of piece. Um, kind of a contrast to the, the peacock sort of uh, carnival glass looking one that I just did. Um, the the foyer table. Um, if you haven't seen that one, it um, has a lot of uh, bright, bright colors on it, um, like carnival glass. It's got purples and blues, um, greens, uh, a lot of stuff, turquoise, a bunch of different things with that one. Oops, I think I used the wrong brush for that one. Okay. See, add some highlights of the pink, the ice, the jewel paste. Sorry, I'm used to saying icing paste because that's the other one that uh, that they carry. So that's like kind of the icing paste. This one. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get this in there. I didn't, I didn't realize it was so out of out of view. So just adding some of this pink brightness in there. Gotta be careful with that. Okay. 
Let's do that over the top. Just kind of brightens it up a little bit. Oh, I missed this spot too, so I'll go ahead and powder that one for this little leg area here. Just add that in there. some of the icing or jewel paste sorry <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to get used to saying jewel paste um but i like it because it's uh it's kind of like the wax is a bit um with as far as brushing it on um easier to brush on but if it's metallic then i pretty much will like it so no contest there. I'll do some on the top so you can see a little bit of how sparkly it is. Oops. Oops. Trying to get both the sides. I'm just gonna brush it lightly over these areas. Take that over. Cupped. Okay. All right, I think that's, yep, that was the last side, four sides. Okay, let's see what to do next. Um, I think let me wipe this paste off so it doesn't dry up on my brush. Um, maybe some lighter pink. Is that too much pink? Or should I go for like a darker red? Should I go for the darker or the lighter? Oh no, I don't really want it to be like a princessy sort of um, look. So, maybe I should do the, the darker wax a little bit. This one's burgundy. Let's see what color it is. Okay, this is more like a red red. I'm not sure about that. Rusty brown. I would want it to look a bit like Tina, so I won't be I won't be like wiping this on necessarily. Um, you can't really see it at all, so probably not. You can't really even see it unless it's on the blue. If I do it on the blue, you can kind of see it, but uh, no, I don't think that it would make any difference. So no brown. I think I'm going to have to go lighter because um, it's going to have difficulty standing out from the other colors. Let's see how this shabby pink is. I haven't used this one yet. So this is like a matte lavender <clears throat> color. Oh, you can really see that one for sure. You can definitely see see that. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's not, it's not bad. Oh, be careful of it oozing out. Um, it's the, one of the tough things with the tubes, you gotta kind of push it back in, in there. So, try not to squeeze it. I think 
kind of smear. I'm using my fingers, doing some finger painting. So, all right, I'll just add it to a little bit of the, the corners and stuff. to kind of highlight the black a little bit, I think. Can you see that? Let me move this closer so you can see what I'm doing. Is that... Okay, I think you can see better now. Hopefully you can see better, um, but I'm just adding a little bit of the pink to the edge of the black um, to make it stand out a little bit more. This is the, the shabby pink wax that I'm using. Let's see, this seems really bright. Just the glare. Okay. And then... I'm going to add it to a little bit of the bottom right here. Can you even... Nope, you can't see that. Sorry. Hold on. Move this down a little bit more. Okay, that's better. So I'm going to add it a little bit to here. Just to highlight some of the details right here where it's black. Um, because black, it, it just kind of looks solid <clears throat> right now. And you can't really tell um, all the lovely mm, details this has. So that's why when you highlight it a little bit, it helps mm, to really make it, make it come out. So you can see you can see this probably better because it's slightly lighter. Um, hopefully. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure that you can see this and that you <clears throat> understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm going to do this area right here. I'm just going to highlight it a little bit too. Just add a little bit of depth to it. Um, just a tiny bit. Don't want to make it too pink. Um, but... It does kind of highlight it a little bit. Like this. So you can see more of the um, these areas where it's carved too. Kind of just sweeps all the way down. Um, but you can't really see it when it's just a solid color. So this will help. gonna do it to the bottom too. So it's, it's got a lot of lovely um, details that you can't see a lot. That ah, it keeps oozing. <laughs> Trying to just dab a little bit, but it's like kind of a blob right now outside of that. A little bit right here. Just add a tiny bit over there and here. Got a little bit right there. I wonder if I should, should I do like a pink along here? You can't really, you can't see, but this is actually edged as well all the way down. This leg. Um, let's see how it looks if I do. I don't know if you can see. Now you can see like it's got, it's edged in right here. So when I 
through the wax. Ugh. Baby wipes are really helpful. I'm just trying to get it a little bit on the edge and not trying to do it on the black per se. I'm just trying to do a little bit on the edging here. Try to get it down a bit more. And then wipe it a little bit. Well, I just kind of just erased it. That was stupid. Okay. So that way you can see it's got a little uh, strip. Maybe I should just do the ins uh, inside of the strip. I'm gonna have to use a Q-tip to get inside of here because my finger is too wide to do that. So I will use a Q-tip um, later since I don't have one with me. No. Oh my god, no. Sorry, the leg got ugh, buried in the jewel paste. Jeez. That's not good. Yeah, that was not what I wanted. I accidentally set it inside of the jewel paste because I'm an idiot. Oh god. Okay. All right, now where did the wax go? Okay, so just gonna add a little bit more of the wax again. Some of these where it's dark, darker. Add a lot of different pinks. I'm trying to do it in the areas where it's more black than the other areas um, that I have it at. You can kind of see. over the jewel paste and then over the curves so uh yeah i with um just the raised tiny raised areas i'm highlighting then i use my fingers and get messy but um if i'm doing a wider area then i just use the brush because it covers better than my finger does but for um the other areas that are just, I just want a touch of it, and I just use my finger to do it because it's easier. So, okay. A little bit over here. a little bit. Like that. Did you ever think as an adult you would uh, do some more finger painting? <laughs> okay. 
I like how that looks. Definitely a good choice. Okay. Alright, save that because doing a q-tip through those little grooves and I'll just do the paste for over here. So we can see more of the details from here. a little bit on there. I don't really want it up here. Yeah, just wipe it off a little bit. Oh, don't set it in the jewel paste this time. Actually, I'll just set the jewel paste somewhere else. Okay. More here. Can't see it really from far away um, on the on the jewel paste, but it does give it more of a matte um, matte finish where I rub it on. Um, so it covers the, the shimmer a bit over the, uh, the jewel paste. So I can just go over like that. Let me get it on the edges a little bit so you can see the edges with the white. Around there. Rub some of it on right there. Okay. Let's get this to ooze out too much. Highlight some of the black on the rock areas. Oh, whoops. Yeah, gotta be careful with the fingers smearing it on too much. So that would be bad. Right 
doing this area right here now. Um, little scallop kind of where that flourishes. Little flourish areas right here. I don't want it too much over. Uh, I'm trying to keep it a little bit subtle with the pink. Getting that breeze. That's it for this area. Um, so I, I'm going to uh, do some more of the waxing. This on. Um, I'm going to go and do a little bit more of the waxing um, on here once I decide what uh, colors to add a little bit on top. Um, not really sure. <clears throat> Not really sure. I may add more of the the, um, the Merlot just to bring it out a little bit more since I kind of covered some of it uh, with the wax. So I may do that. Um, and then I need to work on the coffee table as well. So that's it's got a ways to go for sure. Um, but I just wanted to show you how the uh, powders, um, the Memory Hardware Artisan Powders, kind of what I was using. The molding on the top is original, so all of this is original. I, I didn't have to add anything um, to it, just uh, besides paint and what I'm doing right now, but all these details are original to it, and it's wood, so. Um, this was the powder that I used um, at the beginning, so I used this powder, um, the Memory Hardware Artisan Powder, uh, just used the matte uh, shabby chic, shabby chic color from Finnebear. So I used that one. Um, and then I added a little bit of the ice, the jewel paste. So this is the jewel paste that I added a little bit of um, to over some of the areas. Um, it's really shiny stuff. And this um, is a, it's called Eclipse. It's a uh, black milk paint from Rust-Oleum. Um, they have really amazing milk paints. Uh, it's one of my favorites, actually. Um, and considering the price, it's actually a really good deal. So uh, you should check out their paints if you haven't. Um, and then I used Wise Owl's uh, Black Cherry Enamel Paint on the top um, of this. You can see it's kind of like a, a very sleek, um, enamel paint and the good thing about the enamel paints is like you don't have to seal them um, so you don't if you you know do it in thin layers it's self-leveling since you don't have to seal it you won't get the, um, the streaks you know the uh, the streaks when you poly and stuff like that so it just kind of saves you a step but it's definitely more of a satin glossy finish um, to the enamel paints versus the chalk synthesis paints that I use too um, and I think that's it. Yeah. So that's it for this Saturday. Um, I'll see you again next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we'll be working on something new. I don't know what it is yet, but um, hopefully it'll be fun and interesting for you. So thanks for watching and joining me again. And I hope you have a great weekend um, and a good week <laughs> next week. I'm hoping my week will be better. But um, if you have any questions about the products, please feel free to comment and ask. Um, I will add the links 
into the description. I was trying to do that uh, at the beginning, but Facebook wouldn't let me. I kept deleting it, so um, I'm going to go back and do that now so you can find the products that I'm talking about, um, like the artisan powders and the, um, the Finibear waxes and stuff like that. Um, so I'll add those on so you can find them as well. And yeah, so can't wait for the finished final reveal for um, these really amazing um, set. And yeah, I'll see you next Saturday. So thanks for watching, guys.